All right, so this is kind of my strength story. I discovered strengths probably about eight years ago. Um, at the time, I also was working with the Myers-Briggs. And so when my friend told me about this assessment and he gave me the book, it was called Strength Finder 2.0. I just put it on my bookcase, kind of forgot about it and was thinking, you know, how different could this other assessment be? And then one day I found the book, took the assessment and I was really surprised and impressed with the results because if I were to describe myself to other people, I would use versions of these words. I would say that I'm pretty optimistic. Um, I enjoy meeting new people, which is woo. I uh, enjoy, you know, like collecting information, um, et cetera. So what I like about this assessment is that it goes beyond just helping you understand who you are, but it allows you to think about what you can do with, with who you are and how do you do it in the best way possible. So um, just a really quick example. One, one day, it was probably 16 years ago when my daughter was four months old and I was, I was looking for a bathing suit for her at Target. Um, and there was another woman also looking for bathing suits for her daughter. And we started talking about the very poor selection of bathing suits for you know, infant girls. And then we started asking each other questions. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where is your daughter taking swimming, et cetera? Turned out same swimming class in Cambridge. Um, we, uh, the daughters en ended up being in, in the same preschool and this family is still one of our good friends as a family. But that is not the point of the story. I was telling another friend about my friend Karen who I met at Target and she gave me this look like, who does this? Who meets people at Target? And you know, at the time I was like, you're right, you know, we shouldn't do this, it's kind of weird. Had I known, I would have said people with Wu do this. And maybe I would have used the Wu more with more confidence. And who knows, you know, how many more people I would have met. But a lot of times we don't really know that what we have are these gifts that allow us to do certain things that uh, other people may or may not appreciate. So the more we can own who we are and really embrace the strengths um, and our natural talents, um, the more we can apply them towards work, towards anything to become more um, fulfilled and successful. So the goals today are we're going to introduce the concept of strengths um, and kind of the strengths-based development. Um, we're going to dive into your top five and what that means for you and how do you look at things differently. Um, we're going to uh, talk about how different people might react differently to certain things. Like we are gonna use a job description to kind of think about how people can read a job description through their lens of strengths and, and take different things from it so that you know why you're applying for the specific job and how you're gonna be successful in it your own way. Um, and so that's going to hopefully help you figure out how to start learning how to leverage the power of your strengths. And if, you, if any of you have any questions or connections, anything along the way, please um, use the raise hand symbol, unmute yourselves, put you know, questions into the chat, anything you want, because everyone will be learning from your questions. Um, okay. So the conventional approach to personal development is that we identify an area of improvement and we work at it until it gets better. So how many of you, when you get your report cards, um, you kind of focus only on the A's and kind of ignore everything else because, you know, the A is what matters the most, but nothing matters otherwise. We don't do that, right? It's our human nature to want to improve what isn't as great as we think it could be. Um, if any of you have had any work experience, internships, et cetera, if you had any evaluations or performance reviews, you know, the supervisors might say five great things about us and one thing that might need improvement. And we walk away really focused on that one thing uh, instead of the five things. Um, because again, it's human nature to want to improve what isn't great, right? So then Don Clifton asked this question, what will happen when we think about 
what is right with people rather than fixating on what's wrong with them. Um, and so that led to the strength-based approach. And so, yes, it's true that some behaviors can be learned um, and some behaviors and some skills can be demonstrated to the point of appearing to be excellent, but we may not enjoy the process of acquiring those skills. But if we focus on really identifying and nurturing uh, the things about us that come naturally to us and what we're good at, we're just gonna get better at those things. And if we can find opportunities to play to our strengths in our lives, um, we will be much more um, fulfilled overall, and we will be six times as likely to be engaged in the work that we're doing. So Gallup is always doing, every year they do employee engagement surveys and employee satisfaction um, is about 30%. And so, which is really low. So their goal is to increase that. And they're having a lot of companies work with strengths and a lot of managers work with strengths. Um, and so the goal is to help people find positions, roles, uh, the work that they do where their managers can really help them leverage their strengths. And so it becomes a better you know, overall for the individuals, for the teams, for the organizations. And so in a sense, it's also brain science because we tend to grow more synaptic connections in our brains when we already have them. So when we focus on nurturing our strengths, we already have the synaptic connections there and we're much more likely to grow more. There was um, a study to demonstrate this conducted at University of Nebraska, where they looked at two groups of uh, readers, um, average readers and above average readers. So they timed both groups and the average readers were reading about 90 words per minute and the above average readers were reading 350 words per minute. Then both groups went through the same speed reading intervention. And the average readers increased to 150 words per minute. What do you all think happened to the above average reader? Any guesses? Everyone's on mute, so. I don't, I don't think that they uh, improved at all. Okay. Any other guesses? I, I have a question. I'm kind of confused. So the, um, the first group were focusing on their weaknesses and the second group were focusing on their strength or? Well, the first group was just average readers. The second group was above average readers. And then okay. they both went through a speed reading intervention class. Oh, okay. um, and so the average readers increased um, to 150. The above average readers increased to 2,900 words per minute. I don't know how that is possible, um, but that's amazing. And so this is to demonstrate that, yes, if you focus on working on improving a skill that isn't one of your natural skills or talents, it prevents failure, it, you, know, you will improve. But if you focus on really nurturing a strength that is where you're going to see excellence. Is this surprising? Any reactions? Any comments? I didn't expect it to be quite that high. <laughs> yeah. The strengths. Yeah. Does that resonate, that philosophy? Um, does that make sense just as a starting point? Yeah, some nods. Okay, well, we'll dive into yours in a little while and then we'll be able to explore that more. Um, okay, we, um, so those are kind of things that we do without thinking, right? It's kind of how we're wired. Some people call them our care, you know, characteristics, personality traits, but we all have these instinctive ways of behave, behaving. And some ways are similar to others, some ways are different. Um, the chances of you finding someone with the same top five um, is one in 278,000. The chances of you meeting someone with the same top five in the same order 
is one in 33 million. So your combination of your top five strengths is what makes you unique. It makes you approach different situations in your own specific way because of how your strengths come together. Um, and again, what the, the, the statements that you turned on your cameras for, they all represent different parts of you. They do all connect to different strengths. They may connect to different strengths for different reasons, because again, depending on the other, um, the combinations of, of the other strengths, but, but that's where it comes from. These are the things that we do naturally and other people may or may not do them. They may be, you know, sometimes we appreciate or we're envious of certain things other people can do naturally. Um, but once we start to own the things that we're good at, we can kind of start to let go of comparisons and we have those aha moments. So why strength? So it essentially answers these three questions, who you are, what you do, and most importantly, how you do what you do. Um, so if you take something as simple as taking pictures, um, your motivation for taking pictures might also depend on the different strengths that people have. So for example, if you have the strength of relater, it might be a way that you connect to family and friends. If you have responsibility, you might be the person that others count on to capture you know, the meaningful moments. If you have analytical, you might look at photography as an art as well as a science. And if you have learner, you might first want to learn everything you possibly can about photography before you make it your next hobby for as long as it is. So again, our motivation for the things that we do and how we act comes from who we are at our core, which represents our strengths. Any questions, any thoughts? Oh, I have one question. So the order of which they give us the strengths also makes a difference? I mean, the, the variance is really slight between like okay. one and two and one and five. It's your five of the dominant strengths. So when you would think about dominant strengths, it could be one through nine, 10, 11. You would know once if you saw the whole list, but the top five are the ones that the program picked up on. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna kind of get into your results in just a minute for you to kind of think oh, about okay. whether or not there are any surprises, but it's, it's pretty slight. There's a, there is a slight distinction, but it is again, very slight. Okay, thank you. Sure. So here is another question for you. What, I don't know if it's what or who, but what is the loudest creature in the ocean? Any wild guesses? A human in a neoprene wetsuit. Oh, okay. Any whale. other guesses? Too? A what? Whale. A whale. Whale. Yeah, both um, good guesses. I thought it was a whale as well. But the answer is that it's a tiny little pistol shrimp that's the size of a quarter. And so the reason why it's louder than um, most species of whales, I think there's a couple that might be louder, but it has one claw that's larger than the other and it traps an air bubble and, and squeezes it so that it makes this sonic boom that can kill or at least scare uh, predators. So the thing with this is that there are st some strengths that are visible and people know these things about others. There are some strengths that are invisible and it's up to you to own them, to be able to articulate them. So let's say the, hire, the hiring manager of the ocean is looking to hire you know, someone who will uh, take the lead uh, and they need someone who's loud, right? So they might assume it's going to be the whale. But if you're the shrimp and you know that you are louder than the whale, it is up to you to make that known um, to the hiring manager and let them know how that is that you're louder than the whale. So this just goes to show you that if you have some of these invisible strengths, again, it's a process to really embrace them, but you have to get to know them to figure out what it is that they allow you to do so that you can put them out there and let people know that this is how you're gonna be successful in your own way. Um, so let's say I'm a dolphin and I'm talking to my friend, the shrimp, and we're talking about protecting ourselves from, from predators. 
And I say, well, I find a pack of dolphins and we use physical force. Why don't you try that? So what would happen if the shrimp found a pack of shrimp and they used physical force against the shark? Look. Yeah, they'd be lunch. <laughs> But if they got together and all of them made that sound together, together they would be able to scare or kill the shark, right? So again, here it's do what you do best, not what I do best. So think about how you are going to get to whatever goal you're trying to achieve in your way. Again, a lot of times we see people achieve success doing X, Y, Z, and we think if we do it that way, we're going to be as successful. Um, I had a student, very introverted student, who was telling me he went to a networking event with a friend of his. And the friend was able to work the room. And the student that was telling me this, he said, you know, I tried doing the same thing, but it didn't work. And of course it wouldn't work because that is not how you're gonna get to the same result. So first you have to figure out why are you going to this event? Are you trying to make more connections? Are you trying to deepen a few connections? And is there a way you can do it in a different way? Um, or is there a different purpose for you in going to this event? So again, thinking about how you're going to be successful achieving the goals that you set for yourself. The thing about the shrimp, though, is that it's blind. And so it often partners with a goby fish. So the goby fish wiggles its tail and alerts the shrimp that there's a predator nearby. And then the two of them together, you know, the shrimp makes the sound and the two of them together are able to survive. And so here it's important to understand that the power of par partnerships um, is what, you know, you want to look for. So identifying the, your, your own gaps. And again, we can't be great at everything. It doesn't mean that those are our weaknesses. They're just things that we're just not naturally good at. But we can find people who, are, who will complement them for us. And together we will be able to achieve more. Um, I was working on this Excel spreadsheet and um, it had to have formulas and all this other stuff. And I probably could have figured it out with the help button and it would have taken me, I don't know, all day. And I would not have enjoyed it. Or I could have asked, and I did, I asked my coworker who was just great at Excel. She did it for me. Um, and then there's gonna be something I could do in exchange. So again, looking for ways that we can offer help to others and that identify areas in where we might need some help as well. So this almost concludes our overview, but essentially the things we talked about, the things you turned on your cameras for, um, these are kind of all examples of in, you know, internal talents, um, effortlessly and in instinctively starting conversations thinking in an orderly manner. Again, if we do these things, we might take it for granted that this is what we do. If we don't do these things, we might be able to recognize that in, in other people um, and wish we could be a little bit better at that. But once you start to own that this is what you're good at, this is how you're gonna find the opportunities where you're gonna be able to be successful. And so kind of the clues that tell you this, there are these five clues. Um, yearning, rapid learning, flow, glimpses of excellent, excellence and satisfaction. So it's the things that you're drawn to, activities that you're drawn to, people that you're drawn to. Um, when you feel like you're in the flow, you can lose track of time and you're working on something that's really exciting, engaging, energizing, et cetera. If you're learning something and you're just so hungry for that topic that you lose track of time, um, and if you're doing something, you're, you're producing something, you're doing great work and it's pretty effortless. Um, and so, and that is ultimately what will give you that sense of reward and sense of satisfaction. So as you're you know, exploring different options, going through your days, doing different activities, kind of paying attention of when these might happen for you um, and making sure that when you start looking for that next job, those things will exist as much as possible. So the formula is really, if you take talent, the natural way of thinking and behaving, and you invest time in um, acquiring skills, learning knowledge, et cetera. So what all of you are doing now, 
um, is eventually it's going to become a string. So one example here is if you think of professional firefighters, what are some examples of talents, skills, and knowledge that professional firefighters need to have? And you can just shout them out. Thinking what fast. Doing? What is it? Thinking fast when there's a, yeah. And do you think thinking fast is a talent, skill, or knowledge? Talent? Yeah. Um, it could start with the talent, then the more you learn, you probably think faster. Yeah, what was it? Someone else said something else. Uh, good under pressure. Okay. Also probably talent, I would assume. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Maybe bravery would be more like a talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, but like what's, I mean, a lot of talents so can be learned. If they are learned, would that be a skill? Um, skills can be learned. Yeah. Talents, you can get better at being, at doing something. But again, you may not enjoy the process. Oh, okay. So yes, you're absolutely right. Um, you can learn different skills, but it has to be, in order for it to become a strength, it has to be interesting to you. And again, when you are in that like place of flow as much as possible. Okay. So what are some examples of skills and or knowledge that they would need to have? I think you'd, oh, I think you'd have to be able to work well in a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, but you have to first enjoy being on a team probably in order to then want to continue working on a team. I would say for knowledge that they would need to know where, where did the fire start or where is it most, mostly um, can, you know, um, larger than other, other places. So you'd know which direction the fire was gonna go in. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like physics maybe or something like that. Okay, so this is Ben, he's my friend's son when he was four. Um, he's very brave. He is very quick on his feet. But we, would we send him into a burning house? No, of course not. But if he wanted to become a firefighter, right, this is something that he could start to think about going forward, kind of maybe learning how to do X, Y, Z. And again, it doesn't mean that someone with a different set of strengths can't be a, a successful firefighter. It's just understanding how what you have applies to what you want to do. So that's kind of, that pretty much concludes the overview of the strength-based philosophy, strength-based development. Before we dive into your reports, are there any other insights, questions, reactions? Do you think that your um, top five changes over time? Like, or is this static? So all everyone here is like in their early 20s. If they took it 10 years later, do you think they would end up with the same top five in the same order? There would probably be some movement because, so I've taken it twice and they say you shouldn't take it more, you shouldn't take it more than once within two years. Um, so the first time I took it, what was three and four moved into six and seven. And what was six and eight moved into three and four. And so this set of results just fits me much better. I, it just resonates for me. So sometimes when you're going through a time of transition or you know, you're all students, so you might be pulling in strengths um, that are beyond the top five just to help you through whatever you need to get things done. Um, so I would say maybe once you graduate and you're in your first or whatever it is that you're doing, um, if you're you know, you're doing your own thing, if you're working for someone, but you feel kind of a little bit more settled, I would say take it again, because by that point, you know, you're, you've sort of made these decisions for yourself. Um, and you can kind of see if the decisions that you made resonate with the strengths that you have, you know, that come up the second time. So it's not necessarily that the strengths change, but circumstances change. Um, and allows us to really figure out if we're thriving 
And then if we're not, that's when we can make changes. But you don't have ever expect to see sort of wholesale changes in your kind of basic core strengths. No, although I was thinking about this because, um, so my second one is woo, which is an extroverted strength. It's about meeting new people. Um, and then during the pandemic, I was really happy just being home with my family, which surprised me and them because as an extrovert, I should want to, you know, I, I should be like feeling really frustrated and wanting to go out and meet people. Um, but I, what happened was, I think I started doing more, you know, things on Zoom um, and connecting with people that way, even individuals. So where, whereas before I thought that the woo was a really extroverted strength, I think I got deeper into it to know that it doesn't, it is still that, but it's not about, you know, always being with people, but how I am with people, how I like to connect with people or how frequently. Um, so it just allows you to kind of evaluate it for where you are in whatever time you're going through. I don't know if that answers. No, that was good. Okay. Any other questions? All oh, right. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I have one. So I'm a student and I got just the top five. Do they ex like expire at some point because they want like an extra $35 if I want the full report? No, you can get it anytime. You can get it years from now. Okay. Yeah. So there are 34 total strengths and they're in these four domains. There's the executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. So people with strengths in the executing domain are great at getting things done. It's all about completion. It's this internal drive to complete something, to take action on something. Um, people with influencing, again, these are kind of the more visible ones. You know, these people are kind of the face of something, uh, the messengers, when new relationships need to be built, these are the people that go out and find them. Then the relationship builders are kind of the glue that hold teams together. They have this internal way of connecting to others. And then the strategic thinkers are the ones with the vision, the ideas, et cetera. So another way to think about it is you have the big thing, the strategic thinkers, they're the ones with the big ideas. They need influencers to get these ideas out into the world. Then you need teams to work on these ideas. You need the relationship builders. And then you need the executors to get them, you know, to really implement them. The thing is, we all do these things. We all execute, we all influence, we all build relationships, and we all have ideas and think about the future. But how we do these things depends on where our strengths are. So I don't have anything in executing in my top 10, but somehow I get things done because otherwise I wouldn't have a job. So I have to think about what is the motivator for me to get something done, right? So woo is one of them. I don't want my boss to think negatively of me. Empathy is one of them. I don't wanna let people down. Um, so the external drivers could be just as strong. So if you are missing a domain, you think about, you know, what you have that sort of compensates for that. So, you know, if you have learner, but you don't have anything in relationship building, learners are great at relationship building because they're genuinely curious. And so when they're talking to somebody, they're not doing it to make small talk. They're genuinely interested in the person. And so that other person really feels it and feels that connection. Um, someone with responsibility, it uses, you can use that to make relationships as well because they're known to be very dependable um, and it's a way of being able to connect to others. So again, so if you have, you know, one in four, it, it, it's, well, one or two in every domain, then you know how you do these things or the natural way you do these things. If you don't, you, you have to just think a little bit more about what your strengths allow you to do to achieve that same result. My question, oh yeah, go ahead. Not Sorry, my question is no, that 
I got communication and it's under influencing technically, but if I hadn't seen this graph, I would have real I would have thought it was under a relationship building for communication. So like so like would these basically titles kind of overlap? Sort of. Um so well, I have the whole group grid that we can look at in a minute. Okay. Um, communication in and of itself is an influencing strength because it's your ability, it's your comfort with communicating, right? Are you pretty comfortable communicating yeah. to groups? Yeah. So not everyone is, even in the relationship building domain, not everyone is as comfortable going out there, delivering a speech or making an announcement. But it is a way that you could use communication for a relationship building because of your ease with, you know, being able to talk to people. Oh, it's interesting I brought up like a speech, like I'm more comfortable like communicating like one-on-one -on -one versus like in a group. So yeah. we'll take a look at the, your others and-, and okay, okay. Yeah, we'll be able to make sense of how that they all work together. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. Any other questions? So my question to all of you, I have two questions. One is, um, were there any surprises? Did anyone um, not see a strength in their top five that they expected to see? And the other one is, you know, kind of the flip side is, uh, were you surprised to see something show up in the top five? So either of those questions. Maybe for me, it because um, three of the ones that I got were, well, I have four in the relationship building and then one in the strategic. And I guess because I don't know like the definitions of what each of them mean, um, three of the ones that I got in the relationship all seem very similar to each other. So I don't really know how they're different. Um, because I got empathy, harmony, and uh, relator. So they okay. all kind of tied together, but at the same time, I don't know how to differentiate which is which and what they all mean. Do they fit when you read the descriptions? Do they each one separately? Do you feel like it, it's you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. I guess just in general, I... <clears throat> always state that I am a very empathetic person so the results weren't that surprising but at the same time just okay maybe I okay. thought a little bit more I don't know yeah yeah we'll we'll definitely do some work for that I was going to um upload a a list of them into the chat but I don't think I can do that so I might just email Mary Ellen a couple of different um, handouts that would you be able to just send those out to distribute them? Okay, that would be great. Thanks. Any other surprises? Okay, well, let's take a look at you as a group. Now, I only was able to include if you had submitted um, your results by last week. So if you're not on this list, I do apologize. Um, so this is kind of the breakdown. So yeah, some of you have you know, four in a domain. Um, some of you have three and two. Some of you are kind of spread out across the board. In general, influencing is the domain that is least common overall. Um, so it's not surprising that it's the, you know, the, there are fewer of you in that one. Um, otherwise, I would say it looks like the other three domains are pretty equal. Um, so if you're missing a domain, so there's, a, you know, so a lot of you are missing the influencing domain. So one thing to think about, especially if and when you go on interviews, 
um, is how do you influence? What do you use to influence others? Or what have you used in the past to influence others? Um, and that could be for any domain. So if you're missing the executing domain, what uh, motivates you to get things done? If you're missing the relationship building, again, it's what do you use to connect to other people or how have you done that in the past? Um, and then same with strategic thinkers, how have you been able to come up with ideas in the past? So kind of thinking about those things. Again, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna be as good. It just means that it's not a natural way of doing something, but your natural way of doing something else contributes to the natural way of doing that or the way of doing that, sorry, not the natural way. Um, Carol, I mean, Anne, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I have a question. Um, because it's almost evenly distributed between executing relationship building and strategic thinking, and most of the people in this class are artisan designers, is, have they ever done any studies on professions? They have. I mean, this is kind of how it came out. They, they you know, gave this assessment to people in all different professions and with different talents. Um, and they just found patterns and themes. So my question would be like, how many of you are gonna be, you know, just artists on your own, not working for anybody else, kind of needing that entrepreneurial space. So you can think about, you know, maybe how, how your strengths could help with that. Um, it's interesting, you know, restorative is a, is a big one. Um, and that's about seeing things that need to be essentially restored or improved. Uh, so I don't know if there's a connection. I don't know what kinds of art are people doing? Are you asking that as a question? Yeah, I'm just curious. I can answer. Yeah. So, um, well, I do graphic design, but the major I'm in is painting. So I okay. do that and painting. Um, so like, I mean, I've, I've had gallery shows with my book in them. So that's, that's kind of the, I guess, very good. <laughs> and I'm so, all, I, yeah, go, no, go ahead. Um, there was, there was this, she's retiring now, but there was this woman at Mass Out who has my book, has put my book in, in shows, and I wouldn't have had any opportunity without Elizabeth Chico that you probably all know about. Um, so that's, the trying to communicate with her to get a book is definitely a key thing that I need, that I have that I just need to strengthen, I guess. But you yeah. raise good points. You know, if you are um, thinking about the future, what else, what else, you know, comes into it? Again, especially maybe if you're kind of thinking about more of the entrepreneurial track or, you know, if marketing is going to be something that you're going to need to do or pr promotion and how will you do those? Like, how are you going to kind of make a living from the art that you're doing in the, with the strengths that you have? Like, how can they yeah. help you be an artist as a profession? And um, Connor's brought up a good point that actually um, many art, there's a lot of fluidity between art and design and it's not unusual for designers to have practices in fine art and for fine artists to migrate over into design. So that's that's fairly common. Um, and also I think it was over 75% of the students said they were interested in starting their own studio practice or business. So um, I would say there's a very good understanding that the marketing part of being an artisan designer is very important. Um, and we are having guest speakers come in to address those as well. So just wanted to offer that. 
And the guest speakers are people who are artists, solo artists. Mm -hmm. So one thing to, you know, one opportunity with those speakers could be um, for you all to think about, you know, how, what questions could you ask that will give you the answer of how you with your strengths will be successful. So let's say, um, you know, let, let's say you're missing the relationship building domain. Um, what is, you could come up with questions about relationship building. You know, it's like, how have they done it? Who have they built relationships with? How have they done it? Just for you to know, this is something that you might need to think about going forward. Is it a big part of what you're gonna be doing? Is it not a big part of what you're gonna be doing? And, and then either way, how can you do it in the best way possible with your strengths if that is going to be a part of what you have to do? So I would say, I don't know if the guest speakers could be, like, is there a Q&A with them like, like throughout the sessions? Um, well, we always have a and a but uh, one of them is actually um, a faculty member who has started kind of an entrepreneur um, course where people are creating their own businesses. And she's going to talk about that class and what people have experienced in the past. Um, we have another um, per person coming in talking about social media and how to use so social media to your advantage. Um, and she has her own art practice as well. Um, so those are two that come to mind. But to your point earlier, you were saying that, you know, if you're very responsible, you're, you also are very dependable and that's a good relationship building tool. Um, so I, what I love about the strengths is that it's bringing together what am I good at that really does migrate over into, um, you know, like the relationship part. Of, of what I need. Yeah. Yeah, but it is really helpful to think about, um, and maybe with even with other informational interviews, kind of what do you need to know for yourself as you make these different decisions going forward? What does it take to establish a studio? Or, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just thinking like if, if I were to start a private practice instead of working at Northeastern, given that I don't have natural executing strengths, I would wanna know how much of a private practitioner's work is, you know, constant like actions, like tasks. Um, because if that was most of the work, then I, I like meeting with clients. I, I would like meeting with, you know, uh, pretty much clients. But in the getting of the clients might be something that wouldn't work for someone with my strengths. Right. And Anne, you've brought up an excellent point that I hope the whole class is hearing is that this is really fits into the whole idea of the informational interviewing and knowing, you know, what resonates with you, what's your strength, what would you naturally gravitate towards? And one of the things like, whoa, I didn't know that that it was going to be 50% of the job was finding clients or 75% of the job, maybe 25% of the job would feel okay, but maybe not that much. But those are the really important questions that you want to ask the contacts that you have um, and learn more about yourself. And I don't know how, you know, the, the money aspect works um, for artists that are uh, on their own. I know another challenge with private practice is the charging, like having empathy. I don't wanna charge anyone. I just wanna do it for free, but I don't wanna do it for free, right? So can I get over my discomfort with charging people money um, if that's what I wanna do? So again, thinking about those things, like if you have a lot of the relationship building strengths and that is something where that's gonna be a part of what you have to, figure out how to do, uh, what could that look like that would make it easier? Mm -hmm. That is always a big question with artists and designers is how do I price my work? And there are ways that you can ask the question that it doesn't come across as being um, too forward or rude. Um, so it is, it is in the way that you uh, ask the question too. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this is kind of the beginning. I hope that after today's session, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg, but you kind of take it with you and you start to notice and pay attention to the things that um, are coming up through the strengths. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's great to be able to refer back to your reports over uh, periods of time just to see um, what you, what now seems more natural and understandable. Um, this is kind of the other way to look at the breakdown of you as a group um, in terms of what is most common. And this is going to be interesting when we talk about the job, the sample job description of um, how it appeals to different people for different reasons to see if there's any common themes there. So we'll get to that. So the, the process of really owning your strengths is a three step process. Naming, claiming, and aiming. So naming is really understanding the power of that word, each of the words, as a strength. It's not just an adjective. It's not a funny noun. But why is this a strength? And you know what can what it, is its potential? Claiming is connecting it to previous successes, so that you know how to aim it for what you want more intentionally going forward. Um, so I would like to spend just a little bit of time, if all of you could pull up your insights reports. Um, and I don't know if you can read this, but um, in, in the meantime, I'll send Mariel and some of the handouts that I was going to give you. But if you can kind of go through your in, insights report and note or highlight the phrases, sentences that really stand out to you, it's like, yes, this is me. Um, the difference between the two reports, one is the signature report and one is the insights report. So on the signature report, everyone who has the strength of achiever will have the same description. But on the insights report, each person's achiever or each person's strength is sort of influenced by the other four. So one person's achiever is going to look different from the other person's because of the other four strengths. Um, so Again, it's really paying attention on the insights report to those sentences where you really see yourself. So if we could take maybe, I don't know, a few minutes, um, or maybe we can say like 15 minutes, including a break, however long you'd want for a break. Um, so you can do a couple of these, then take a little break, come back to them. And maybe um, if we reconvene at 10 past three, yeah. I okay. A, oh, sorry. Okay. I have a question before we break off. So I just have the five strengths, like the word and the definition of what it is. Um, did we need to buy the like the upgrade to unlock the other reports? Mm. You should have received. You should have access to two reports. You took the. Um, let's see. Oh, I think, oh, I think I saw that there is like a view. Um, well, it says new report available, Clifton Strands 24 report, upgrade to unlock report, and then view sample report. And then now I'm looking at the sample report, but. But you don't want this. Has anyone else been able to find their insights report? Um, yeah. Can someone? Can someone tell Nada how they did that from their side? Uh, click on reports. Mm -hmm. And then on it, there's the, on the right side, you click on the strengths insight guide. I think that's the right thing. Yeah, that's the right thing, the strengths insight guide. You just download oh, it. Okay, I got it. Yes, thank you. Oh, great, okay. All right, so, um, so let's meet back at 10 after three mm -hmm. um, and just see, you know, what you can pull out for yourselves and then we'll move forward in an interview. So just keep that in mind. Um, but let's say um, one example I can give you from my own experience with empathy. So um, again, going back to my daughter, same daughter. A couple of years ago, she was calling me all day at work because she 
was supposed to go on a field trip and she really didn't want to go. She didn't think she would have any friends going. And up about two o'clock, I was pretty firm. I'm like, you're going, you're going, you're going. At around two o'clock, I started feeling, you know, I wouldn't really want to go either if I didn't think I had friends. And is it really that, you know, detrimental if I let her skip this field trip if she really doesn't want to go? So I might have been about to say, you don't have to go, but my boss at the time ran into my office and said, you're in the basement of empathy. And so had I let her not go, it would have been, that decision would have been made for the wrong reason. It would have been out of empathy, not logic. She went, she had a great time. Uh, it all worked out. But again, it's when you feel like your strength is about to do something and you're not sure if that's the best thing, okay? So when we have these thoughts, it's really important to kind of experience that feeling of when we're about to go into the basement or when we're already in the basement um, and think about how do we get out, right? So if you think about a dog running after a squirrel and the squirrel runs across the street, the dog isn't gonna stop at the, at the road and look both ways. It's just gonna go and dart across the road. But we have the power to pause. We have the power to think about our own natural reactions to things and the behaviors that they would cause, right? So um, I had a student who was a president of an organization and she had activators for number one. And she said, how do I get my board to do what I need them to do so they don't think I'm nagging them? So she knew that she was probably coming across as a nag. And she was able to answer you know, her own question. She said she could write the email to them in the way that she would wanna do it instinctively, but that not send it and kind of have somebody else take a look at it to make sure the tone was the right tone. So here it's sort of um, this three-part model. So this gives you that self-awareness, what your strength could do. And the basement is how you could be perceived by others. Maybe it's not necessarily uh, what you do regularly, but it's something that may happen. And you, you wanna avoid that. Um, so then the self-regulation is how, you know, how do I pause? How do I change that? How do I put into the world something different? And then that's the self-expression, okay? So what I want you all to do um, in the next couple of minutes, I am going to uh, assign you to breakout rooms, uh, about three, three people to a room. And I want you to choose one strength from reading your report that you really love. This is you, it's been you for as long as you can remember and it's, you just know it and you love it. One, another one, or it could be the same one that drives you or others crazy. And again, you can look for clues on the basement report. And then the third one is envy, right? So if there is something you don't have, but if you did, something in your life would be easier. So I envy anything in the executing domain, especially focus or discipline, uh, because then I think I could have learned to play a musical instrument, but I don't. So again, something that you envy, something you don't have that you envy. If you think about the next step of claiming, um, and I would love to hear just a couple of examples. So this is when if you can think of a recent success or accomplishment, something that was rewarding or something that was fulfilling, um, an activity, it doesn't have to be anything related to your academics, anything to, you know, anything professional, um, and how your strengths played a role in that experience. If there's just a couple of examples um, that two of you might be able to share, that would be great in September, regardless of what was happening last year, but, um, or even getting through last year, how your strengths might've helped you through the year.
Um, I would say like one of my strengths was deliberative. Um, and it says you're eager to fulfill your commitments. Often you are described as earnest. I would say that's pretty true. Um, I do take things pretty seriously. So I would say that definitely came through even in like remote learning. I like would like discipline myself to like get work done and not really slack off. I don't know. Yeah, that that's definitely something that would have been helpful. Anything else? So these are really great opportunities to come up with narratives for if and when you're interviewing. And um, the questions could be, tell me about a time that something happened, right? To weave the strengths in, especially if it was a positive experience that, you, that made you successful, um, that you can articulate how your strengths played into that. Because again, it demonstrates a level of self-awareness that um, you know, isn't obvious to everybody else. So it will show the interviewer that you have that self-awareness, um, you're being authentic, and you know yourself well enough to know how you would be successful in, in a future role. Um, in that example, would you mention to the employer that you took the Clifton strength, or do you just like, okay. No, because they shouldn't know your strengths anyway. You shouldn't hire for specific strengths. It's really about you knowing yourself enough to know how to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. So if the question was, how did you get through the pandemic, right? To be able to answer that. Um, and if you could tie your strengths to that. So, you know, I have positivity, I have input, like fruit ideation. For me, it was like exciting. And it was all these new things we could learn how to do on Zoom and ways we could, you know, connect with other students, each other. Um, and the positivity is like, oh, wow, well, it'll be fine. You know, we'll come out on the other side. Um, whereas some of my coworkers were really anxious and concerned. Um, so hopefully, you know, some of us with more positivity were able to kind of help the department. But again, thinking about the contributions you can make with your strengths and how have you done that in the past and how will you do that in the future? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any other connections? Well, the last piece of this is the aiming. And so you can, again, aim your strengths in a lot of different ways. Um, in this case, what we're talking about today is how to find the right job or how to do the job in the best way that you can. Um, so Mary Ellen sent me a job description and I don't know if they have it. Can you send it to them just so they have it too? Okay, so this was a, a job. It, it, it was the events and outreach coordinator um, at Harvard Grad School of Design. So I went through the job description from the summary section to the duties and responsibilities, um, and then kind of some additional responsibilities here and the qualifications. And the things that I highlighted are words and phrases which could connect to specific strengths. So that means that, you know, many of you could be interested in this job, but you would be interested in it for different reasons. Different aspects of the job would be more appealing than others. Um, and you would know how you would do the job, again, in your way, so that you would be successful. Um, so when I went through, kind of these are some of the ones that I pulled out. Um, the words from the job description and the strengths that they could connect to. So. What I would love, if we can do this in the next few minutes, if everyone can take a look at the job description 
And I will ask some of you to tell me if the job is appealing to you. And if so, what are the aspects that make it, make it so, okay? I'm gonna stop sharing so you, to give you a chance to read it through. Just a few minutes, just skim it through. They don't have it yet. Okay. Uh, I only sent it to you. I didn't know you wanted me to send it. To oh, you. that's okay. I can, can you read it on my screen if I have it on my screen? Yes. <clears throat> okay, okay, let's do that. And maybe even if you pay attention to the words that I highlighted, uh, if any of those resonate for you, um, just kind of make a note of that. Right, and I'll go to the next slide. Okay, this is the third slide. And the final slide. And yes, just to clarify, um, the reasons why certain words are highlighted, or the just tell us again why they are. Yeah, so they just they're words that stood out to me as very clear connections to specific strengths. Got it. Thank you. Uh, 